we go. Oh, guys, 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 guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Day. The end of Christmas Day. It's 20 to 7. So it's almost 6.40. Whoop. And um, I am about to go out and shoot some birds. And by shoot, I don't mean... I mean use a camera to shoot some photos of some birds. And I thought it would be time... It would be time in the drive down to Queenscliff where I'm going to talk to you about tricky verb pairs in English. So I was just having a discussion with my wife, Kel, and I was trying to discuss or trying to ask how I can say um, to loan something to someone in Portuguese. And she was saying the verb to me, which is the same as to rent, right? Okay, so I'll use some Portuguese. Um, alugiar is a verb that means to rent. So at the moment we're alugiando um, our house. We are renting our house. And I was asking her, but how do I say that the owner of the house is loaning the house to us or is renting the house to us, I guess you could also say. And she said, oh, alugiar para alguien, to uh, rent for someone, literally. And I was like, what? So they use the same verb in that sense. You can rent from someone, you can rent to someone. I guess we do that. But we would also use the verb in English to loan. And I guess that one, ironically enough, that one can be used in both directions. You can loan a book from a library and you can loan something to, the library loans the book to someone. So even I'm just figuring this out. So if you want to add direction, I guess there, with those sorts of verbs, if in doubt, from obviously shows you the direction, right? From goes to you, goes from someone to you. To shows the direction from which um, the thing is going. So if I rent something to someone, that shows that I am the person who owns the thing and I'm renting it to the person, I'm loaning it to the person. If I rent something from someone, it shows that someone else owns it and they're giving it to me. I am getting it from them. I am loaning it from them. I am renting it from them. Anyway, I don't know. I'm sort of talking through this. I haven't thought deeply about it, but I thought it would be a good conversation because quite often I'm hearing people learning English. I'm Quite often I hear you guys use verbs the opposite way around, right? So for instance, um, someone might say, when are you going here? And you would never say that as a natural English speaker, some, a native speaker. English speaker who's trying to speak naturally, you would never say go here. When you're talking about the place here, you would use come here, go somewhere else, anywhere else that you are not, right? Or that isn't here. So I might go to the shops, but if I said I might come to the shops, the idea is that the person I'm talking about is already there and I'm talking about coming to that person, okay? So there was that. Come and go is a really good example. Come is towards the subject or the, the object, the person, the thing that you're talking about. You come towards that thing. Go is usually away from the thing that you're talking about to somewhere else. And there are some other verb pairs like this. So for instance, you might say, what was the other one? Let me think, let me think. Borrow and lend, right? This is one that gets a lot of people as well. Now, unlike loan and rent, you can't add to or from to the end of either of these verbs to mix it around. In this case, if you say borrow something, it's always borrow something from someone. So it's going from the person who owns that thing and you are borrowing it. That is that you get to use it for a certain amount of time without paying for it, so for free. I might borrow a book from the library right? But it's free. I don't have to pay the library. It's, it's a free service. I might borrow the lawnmower from my father. He's going to give me the lawnmower to use, but it's still his and I need to give it back to him, right? I'm going to borrow the lawnmower from my dad. So I borrow something from someone who lends that thing to me. So the library lends the book to me. I borrow the book from the library. My father lends the lawnmower to me. I borrow the lawnmower from my father. So it's important to know those verbs and which sort of direction 
they're, they're going with regards to the subject and object in the sentence, right? Because if you use them incorrectly, it will often confuse native speakers. So for instance, if you said, I am borrowing my book to my uncle, people would be confused because they don't know you've used to, which shows that it's going from you to your uncle, but you've used the word borrow, which shows that it's coming from someone else to you, right? It's going to confuse people when you mix those up. The same is I um, lent this book from the library. People would be like, they'd understand, but often they'll have to think for a moment because it can be confusing. Another example of some of these pairs was hear and listen. So in this case, if you hear something, it's usually not an active process. So at the moment, I'm driving and I can hear the wind outside. I can hear other cars. I'm not listening to the cars though. I'm not listening for those cars. So in this case, this is a good, a good pair that people also confuse. If you hear music, for example, it's just that you are doing whatever you're doing and there's music playing somewhere that you can hear if you pay attention. Oh, okay, I can hear some music next door. If you're listening to some music, it's that you are actively listening to this music, right? You are trying to hear the music actively, so we would use the verb listen. So that's why you will say something like, you'll tell someone, listen to me, as in, pay attention and hear the words that I am trying to say. Whereas if you said to someone, can you hear me? That's not necessarily if they're meant to be listening to the words, you just want to know, are they able to hear you talking? Whether or not they understand or whether or not they're listening actively, right? So imagine you're trying to use a microphone that you've just plugged in at a concert, you're a singer. You might say to the person at the front of the concert hall who's playing with the buttons and playing with the levels of the sound, can you hear me? Hello, one, two, one, two, can you hear me? Testing, testing, can you hear me? You wouldn't say, can you listen to me? You would say, can you listen to me? If you're trying to get the person to pay active attention to what you're trying to say, okay? So there's, there's minute differences between these verbs and that's why it's weird if you say to someone, for instance, oh, there was someone outside and I could listen to them. It would be like, what do you mean? You were trying to listen to the words they were saying? Or you were just listening to them moving around actively? But if you said there was someone outside and I could hear them, it shows that you could just hear the noises they were make. You weren't necessarily actively trying to hear what they were saying or actively trying to hear what they were doing, but they were making noise such that you could hear that noise. Okay, anyway, those were some verb pairs that I wanted to pay uh, a little bit of attention to for you guys on this episode today because I've heard them get confused quite a lot by my students, okay? So, let's just recap. And I'll try and remember and start from the start. Um, if you rent something, if you just say, I'm renting the car, that would tell me that you're paying money to use that car for a period of time. If you use it with rents to someone, I'm renting the car to someone, that shows me that you are the car owner or the person in charge of the car and you are getting someone else to pay for it to use it for a certain amount of time. I'm renting the car to my employee. If you say I'm renting something from someone, the employee now is renting the car from you, it shows they're the ones renting and you're the one who owns it, they're renting it from you. Same thing with loaning, okay, to loan. If you just say I'm loaning the car, my first thought will be that you're paying to use the car. If you say that I'm loaning the car to someone, it tells me you own the car, you're in charge of the car, and you're loaning it to a person who's paying money to use it for a certain amount of time. And if you say, I'm loaning the car from someone, it shows that you don't own the car, own the car, you're paying money to use the car from someone who does own the car. Okay, the same with um, come and go. I'm coming means I am 
coming to the place that I'm thinking about in mind, the subject location, right? So someone's at the beach and they, they might say to you, are you coming to the beach? Are you coming to see me, right? They're talking about the location they are as here and they want to know if you're going to come to them. Um, if you want to know if, if you should go to the beach, so should I go to the beach later? or um, maybe should I go to the shops, you're thinking about that location as not here, it's, it's the there. It's not in the location you're currently at, so you want to go to that location, okay? So that's how we'll use those differently. Come here, go there. Come here, go there. Uh, what were the other ones? So we had come here, go there. We had uh, loan and rent. We also had borrow and lend. So you borrow something from someone. So you're the one borrowing the thing from someone. So you get that thing for a period of time for free. You don't have to pay to use it, you're borrowing it. If you lend something to someone, you're the one who owns the thing and you're allowing someone else to use it. You're giving the thing to them for a period of time for free. I'm lending the car to my friend. He's borrowing the car from me, okay? So again, they imply directionality in that relationship. And the last one was hear and listen. To hear something is for you to perceive that thing with your ears, but not necessarily actively, like you're trying to um, listen in that case. Listen would be the active verb. Hear is the passive verb. So I can hear some noises but I might listen to the words you're saying. I'm listening to you so I can understand everything you say because I'm paying close attention. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know that these verbs are pretty confusing. The best way to get to know how to use them is to just keep using them, using them, using them. Write out sentences, guys. Uh, make up stories. Have conversations with friends. Uh, just practice, 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 and revise, revise, revise. If you forget what they mean, this happens to me all the time with verbs in Portuguese. Don't stress. Learn them again. Say them out loud. Create some sentences. Write something down. Try and use them if you've forgotten them and you have to look them up again. And then, you know, just let the process do its work. It'll take time. It takes a lot of practice, but slow and steady wins the race. Just keep working, guys. Anyway, I'm almost there. So I'm going to go shoot some photos and I'll chat to you soon. See ya. Never thought I'd be deep, though. Swept away, you cast aside, no.